Hello, welcome to another video. I will be taking the derivative of sine squared x using the definition of the derivative, or what we call derivatives from first principles. Now, I would recommend that you do exercises like this, even if it is not required, because in you doing it, you're going to learn some things, or you're going to discover things that you probably would think were not important, or you would find the faster way or the better way or the more efficient way to do some algebra or some trig that you never paid attention to. So this is my general recommendation. Just pick a function that you know the derivative of and try to work through it using the definition of the derivative and see how it turns out. It always, always, always teaches you something that you probably never paid attention to. And that was a lesson I learned when I started working on this one this morning. Let's get into the video. So we're just going to use the definition and see where it takes us. So we're going to say that the derivative f prime of x will be equal to, we're going to apply this, so it's going to be, the only thing that changes is x becomes x plus h. So we're going to write the limit as h goes to 0 of sine squared, instead of x, we're going to write x plus h minus the function itself, which is sine squared x. Now, initially, this doesn't look promising at all because you don't know what kind of manipulations you want to do. What I'm going to do is rewrite this expression as the limit as h goes to 0 of sine x plus h all squared. Because that's another way to write this. Minus sine x all squared divided by h. And clearly, this tells me I have the difference of two squares. And if you have the difference of two squares, you can rewrite it as this minus this, this plus this, right? Okay, so let's do that. So we're going to say that this is equal to the limit as h goes to 0 of sine x plus h minus sine x. Okay, let's use this multiplied by sine x plus h plus sine x, okay, all divided by h. Now, all you have to do is focus on each of these, okay? We're going to focus on this, we're going to focus on this, whatever we get is what we get, <laughs> okay? So, remember that... Um, when you do things like this, what you're actually doing is you are taking the limit. This looks like you're taking the limit of a product. You notice that? You're taking the limit of a product. And this h can only go with either of them because there's no plus sign here. So I think I'm going to give the h to the left-hand side. And I'm going to let this just be. So um, let's rewrite this expression. So we're going to say this is equal to, or let's write f prime of x is equal to the limit. So I'm going to give the limit to each of the products, but I'll give the h to one side. So remember, here you can give h to this and this because there's a minus sign or a plus sign. But now that there's a product, you can only have one h. So I'm going to say this is the limit as h goes to 0 of, this is going to be sine x plus h. Um, if for those of you, for some people who say that I write too tiny, it's because I'm trying to preserve the, the work, all the work on the board. Okay, so I apologize for that. Uh, so this is going to be the limit as h goes to 0 of sine x plus h minus sine x divided by, I'm going to give the h to just this part. Okay, and then I'm going to multiply it. Remember the limit law that the limit of a product is the product of the limits, as long as each of the limits exists. Okay, so now we're going to say this is the limit 
as h goes to 0. But now there's no h. We've taken the h here, so we're just going to write this. This is going to be sine. Um, this is x plus h plus sine x. Okay. So clearly, I know if I take this limit, this is straightforward. As h goes to 0, this is going to go to 0. You're going to have just sine x. And this is plus sine x. So sine x plus sine x is going to give you 2 sine x. So I can as well just write the answer here. This is times 2 sine x. I'm done with that part. The focus now is here. And I've seen this before because if you watch my other videos where I did the uh, derivative from first principle of trig functions, you know the manipulation we do. We're going to use the angle sum um, identity here. So we're going to have this is equal to the limit as h goes to 0 of, if we write this out, this is going to be sine x cosine h plus cosine x sine h minus sine x all divided by h. And I said we're going to put this and this together so that what we have because this has sine x and this has sine x, so we can have the limit as h goes to 0. Let's put this in parentheses. As h goes to 0 of, if we factor out sine x, we're going to get sine x multiplied by, what is left is cosine h. And if you take out sine x from here, what you have left is just 1. So it's going to be um, cosine h minus 1. We're still going to divide by h. And what do we have left? We're going to have this guy plus cosine x sine h over h also. Then all of this multiplied by, so this is where we have a limit, okay? And we're just multiplying by 2 sine x. Okay. What is left? We need to clean this up. I know that this identity, cosine h minus 1 over h, will go to 0. Okay? Recall, let's put that where? Let's write it somewhere in the corner. Let's do that here. Again, for those of you who don't know this, you're supposed to know this. That the limit as h goes to 0 of... Um, cosine, let's not do h, let's do theta, of cosine theta minus 1 over theta is equal to 0. That will always go to 0. Cosine theta minus 1 over theta, as long as theta goes to 0, this will go to 0. And that's the situation you have here. This is going to 0, so let's rewrite this. This is going to be the limit as h goes to 0 of sine x. Okay, multiplied. I'm applying the limit law now, I'm distributing the limit to all of them, multiplied by the limit as cosine h minus 1, as h, as h goes to 0 of cosine h minus 1 over h. Okay, so this is a product plus the limit as h goes to 0. Now I'm going to split this too because I know that sine h over h will go to as h goes to 0 when you take the limit. So we can also add another one. We know that the limit as h goes to 0 of, sorry, let's do theta again, as of sine theta over theta equals 1. Okay, so we're going to have 1 here. So this is going to be the cosine of x multiplied by um, sine h over h. Okay, so Basically, oh, I could have split that. You know what? I'll split it. So it's going to be times the limit as h goes to 0 of sine h over h. Okay? Times 2 sine x. Okay. We're all good. So let's write out the answers. This, because there's no h here, I'm going to have my sine x. Sine x is what I get here. I'm multiplying by this I said is going to go to 0 because of this. So this is 0. Plus 
this is going to be, there's no H here, so I'm still going to have my cosine X, okay? Um, oh, by the way, all of this is multiplied. All of this is multiplied. Okay, so what do we have? We have all of this multiplied by, and this goes to 1. This is 1 multiplied by 2 sine x. So what comes out of this? Here we've got 0 plus cosine x. Okay, multiplied by 2 sine x. Well, it looks like our answer is just cosine x times 2 sine x. So our answer is 2 sine x cosine x. And that's the derivative of sine squared x. 2 sine x cosine x, or you can rewrite this as sine 2x if you want to use the identity. Or, let's just do that, or sine 2x. Whichever you like, take it. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning have stopped living. Bye-bye.